الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أتي الله أتي الرسول ولا الأمر منكم and I was a reminder for myself and Abdul Qur'an just a da'if or miskeen and zalim and jihad and but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence Alhamdulillah that the holy month of Safar coming to an end and the holy month of Rabbil Awwal opening with the immensities of light and blessings and the celebration of creation, Qur'an, Islam is the celebration of the life and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad And we pray that Allah grant us a life in which to see those days, to be dressed by them, blessed by them and that the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah to open within our hearts. And the key to that opening is in the celebration and recognition of the immensity of the Miladul Nabi in which Allah is a hidden treasure wanting to be known. And that La ilaha illallah will never be known and that nobody can enter into that reality, nobody can understand that reality and that that reality was a hidden treasure and is a hidden treasure and wanted to be known and as a result of wanting to be known created Muhammadun Rasulullah That everything in creation is from the ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah Bahr al-Muhit an ocean of immense lights. And that that light Muhammadun Rasulullah Allah takes from that light and brings creations and creations and creations into existence. And the immensity of that reality, the immensity of that blessings opens for the servant in their heart with the celebration of the Miladun Nabi Because that's the, the point in which the origin that when we celebrate and recognize that immensity Allah grants that light to be born within our heart, it's, it's reality. And if that light is born within the heart of the believer and it begins its growth and blessing, Sayyidina Muhammad begins to Occupy the heart of the believer. As Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nur John. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. ...within themselves and that light inside is the light that fights for our iman and our Islam, our iman and wal maqam al ihsan That Allah describes that Prophet is in you and within you, fiikum, that He's amongst you, He's actually within you and that reality has to be born, that reality has to be acknowledged. And that's when Allah gave us a trust that I've given you a trust but you have to acknowledge that trust. And the haqqaiq of that trust and the amanat that Allah gave to us is that you have a temporary life when I sent you upon this earth. But your eternal life and your eternal reality is the secret of Muhammadun Rasulullah That's what Allah is referring to that whom He guides, He guides. And now there's darajats of guidance. You be guided to a truth of eternity means Allah guides you to the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah they take shahada. Immediately that light is now becoming eternal within the heart of the servant. 
whom Allah truly wants to guide into the higher levels of faith and iman or al-maqam al-ihsan, He guides them to the Muhammadan haqqaiqs in which they begin to be taught by awliyaullah that that light is not just an ordinary light, that the light of Prophet that has to do with the lights of faith in all of eternity in which Prophet described to Hazrat Umar that, you have to love me Ya Umar more than you love yourself, your father, your mother, your parents, your brothers and sisters. At that time the love of family was very, very dear and is today. And Prophet giving to us that the station of iman is to love Sayyidina Muhammad more than we love ourselves which is, is I think it's easily said impossible to achieve because the love of self is so dear that every time we want to do something for ourselves, think that I want to reach the station of ishq and muhabbat for Sayyidina Muhammad and nazar karam that we recite all these knots and all of these knots are a reminder from awliyaullah that they're all real and haqqaiqs that we want the nazar of Prophet to achieve this. It's not something we just say, it's something that we have to achieve. And then Prophet is watching us that every choice we make and we make a choice towards ourself, Prophet watching within the heart then choose me. Before you choose yourself, choose me. And that becomes our life's motto that before I do something for myself then I have to choose the reality that what is Allah want and what is Sayyidina Muhammad want for myself. From what I eat, what I drink, what I do, how I do, what actions I provide, where I spend my money, where I occupy my time every aspect of our life to achieve that reality. Because without a doubt we take care of ourselves very well. We eat what we desire, drink what we desire, entertain ourselves the way we desire, occupy ourselves the way we desire and what Prophet is giving to us, love me more than you love yourself. That in every moment we try to abstain from the entertainment of only ourselves and say that, how is this now something that I can do towards the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Because many times people are, are emailing, I don't have time for awrads. That you gave us a wazifa, the wazifa that comes through the app and th- through the shaykhs, these are handed down from the, the grandmasters of the Naqshbandi order, it's a telephone for us to understand. Because we say we love Prophet well everybody <laughs> as we put an ad out they, they call from India and Pakistan that, please send your number Shaykh we want to call you because everyone on their rickshaw has a phone now. Ten million people and ten billion people <laughs> have a phone they want to call. So the desire to call and to be close. So then what do you think then the phone number to Prophet is? <laughs> That's it, it's the awrad, the wazifas that Prophet gave to his awliya and dispersed numbers. These are the ways for them to connect with me. Give out your cell to the students. So they give out these awrads and wazifas and taught. Because the more powerful phone is not this thing that the bitten apple that got us in trouble and brought us here, but what Allah put within the heart. وَلَكَدْ كَرَامْنَا بَنِيَمْ I have chosen this creation. I put tools in them that all creation is jealous of them. They have a heart that can bring themselves into my presence like a Star Trek movie. You know, beam me up. The potential when you hear the teachings of awliya, the potentials of being taught and trained and meditate and contemplate is in the end what? 
The believer can have a miraj into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and that presence is in the presence of Allah How? By their qalb. He didn't give to giraffe, didn't give to anything in the animal kingdom. But he gave the heart of the believer and told them that, this is my house. If you clean it, wash it, circumambulate it and you worship within it is going to be real and the worshipness is going to levitate them and transport them into Divinely Presence. And the true Divinely Presence can only be achieved through Muhammadun Rasulullah Because we said before, you cannot reach, it's like an ocean, like a barrier. Can anyone reach to La ilaha illallah? No. Can they reach to what they imagine to be, La ilaha illallah? Maybe because there's imagination. But the only door to that reality is Muhammadun Rasulullah That's why Israhi wal Maraj, all the Prophets came and took their allegiance from Sayyidina Muhammad before the miraj was the Isra and the Isra Prophet gathered, prayed amongst all the Prophets in their spirituality and they had to give their tashahul and they had to give their shahada to Prophet They took their bayat, completed their deen and opened now their bridge because there is no way to La ilaha illallah without Muhammadun Rasulullah if possible. Now Akhir Zaman you see it. The cousins, they're idol worshippers. They're waiting for a man who will call himself God, Butparast, they're outside of anything to do. They never had La ilaha illallah nor will they ever reach La ilaha illallah until they accept Muhammadun Rasulullah they're waiting for somebody who they're going to call a god. The other cousins, <laughs> same thing. They're even saying it from now, he is a god. Astaghfirullah, you just cut yourself from uh, any type of tawheed. So do they have any access to Allah and Allah? No, because they show you all the bridges in their imagination now we're entering towards judgment day, akhir zaman. Allah cut all the bridges so that even in our physical world look to them. Those whom angered Allah and those whom went astray, both their bridges have been cut and they have no access to La ilaha illallah. So the Dajjal is coming to pretend he is La ilaha illallah astaghfirullah. He's coming to say he's a God. So it means everything is cut. The immensity of Muhammadun Rasulullah Means is the immensity of this gate. That the love of Prophet is our key. The love of Sayyidina Muhammad can never be taken away from the believer and they will try. They'll say, Oh, we're all united in La ilaha illallah. I say, We are not united in anything. The only unity we have is in Muhammadun Rasulullah. Because as soon as you say we're united in La ilaha illallah, they tell you, why don't you just leave the Muhammadun Rasulullah part out? We all come together and we can say, Kumbaya, Kumbaya. This is Dajjal's plan. So in last days it becomes an immense key, the shaitan trying to take from the hand of somebody. They drop that key and as he plans to make it difficult, Allah grants to the believers that that key is your power. <clears throat> that key is your power that you hold tight to Muhammadun Rasulullah make your deen to be real. So we carry the sunnah of Sayyidina Muhammad Why? Because this is what we just said, we want to love Prophet more than we love ourselves. Right? So you carry the holy beard, carry the holy turban, carry the holy clothes, everything to do with Prophet and the sunnah of Muhammadun Rasulullah is the sunnah of the entire kingdom of the heavens, it's the sunnah of the king. 
that Sayyidina Sulaiman wanted his ring, Sayyidina Musa wanted his staff. All the Prophets wanted something from Prophet and he gave it to his nation as an inheritance. And his nation leaves it, they give their key away because that's what shaitan wanted, give me this key, I give you dunya. Give me this key and I give you all these treasures, right? So now they pay billion dollars for a man who plays with a bowl. Come in their country and take the keys away from my people. They're not coming to propagate the sunnah, they're, prop- they're coming to take away the deen. When Prophet described Dajjal would enter, people thought he's coming like with horns, goatee and a pitchfork. I'm here. No, he's a guy playing with a ball from the NBA. Then there's another guy kicking a ball from some else, other organization. They're all entering in, entering in what? To take the faith of people. They enter in and say, leave this look, play with ball like us. Then many of them will turn in their keys, okay, yeah, you're right and we'll pay you big money too. It's already happening before our eyes and now this becomes their great deceit. If the target is for people to enter in to a cave of disaster and gloom awaits, well how are they going to take people into that cave? By making events that push people to choose that direction. So sicknesses come and people think that the remedy within their sickness because they'll be so frightened of the sicknesses that are coming. Why? Because they want everybody in this cave to be given something. So they present these sicknesses, so what? People will run to the cave, where are we going to be safe? In there, that's what we said at the beginning, you don't know auzu, nothing else is going to make sense to you. Because as soon as you want to take that you say, is that breaking my auzu? Am I really going to be protected by that? The auzu, auzu billahi min shaitanir rajeem, Allah to seek refuge in those whom are in my refuge. The only refuge is Sayyidina Muhammad all of this is tied into the love of Prophet If my refuge is with Prophet my protection is with Prophet then increase the love, increase the love. That to keep the love, the sunnah and the way of Prophet then the tariqahs come and say, these are the muhibeen and the ashiqeen. And that they work on their character so that their character and actions are matching. What we talked the night before, they walk in a companionship with Sayyidina Muhammad Isn't that the hadith? That if you make durood upon me, Prophet described, Allah will send my soul to make durood upon you. So all day long they're making the the Sharif, what would make Prophet to leave you? Bad character, yell, cheat, gossip bad, talk bad, spread deceit. You can't be walking with Prophet this is not even a viable statement. So somebody says, I'm do Durud Sharif. I'm one of those people shaykhs talking about, but you lie, you cheat, you steal and, and spread deception, then you have to know yourself Prophet is not walking with you. So sadiq and truthful servants when their actions, their salawats, their zikrs, everything they do in the character of their goodness and, and, and correctness then know that they walk in the companionship of Sayyidina Muhammad in which Prophet described, you be with whom you love. So to keep that, how do I keep that? How do I keep that presence? How do I keep that love? 
How do I keep that, that tajalli and that blessing is to exhibit the good character. As a result of good character they keep the presence of Prophet ﷺ's nazar and his holy nazar is upon them. Their durood is upon him ﷺ and as a result they are very powerful because the nazar karam is upon them. That's the nazar thing. The not after not is saying, what? How I reach this station? What, you think you reached it by Ramadan? By zakat? By making 10 hajj? You're going to reach those stations? Mm, even 10,000 lives won't get you that station. But one nazar karam of Prophet ﷺ in which he loves you. He loves your character and your actions and your intentions. That nazar lift you into His Divine the Presence. Just in a blink of an eye. As Allah called the reality of Prophet ﷺ to qawb qawsayni wa adana. Can anyone achieve that? Did anyone achieve that? Did any Prophet achieve that? No. That Allah called Prophet to His Divine the Presence in physicality beyond space and time's understanding. What Allah gave to His nation is that Prophet can call your soul at any moment into His Divine the Presence. And if He calls it into your Divine the Presence He can dress and bless that soul beyond imagination because we can understand the station and the maqam of Prophet It's not something big, it's not something difficult, it's something huge, it's not something difficult. That that holy nazar if it gaze upon you, that's why all of the not is that keep your nazar upon us, that gaze upon us, whatever good things that we can do we're trying to get your attention because if that nazar comes begin to make you cry, dressed and blessed, it's filled with lights. Now that people are more advanced in their science and understanding you don't even have to travel. It's not like you have to go billions of miles. It's a horizontal vibration. Prophet is everywhere. There is nowhere that Prophet ﷺ is not. He's more and more powerful than shaitan, he owns. Shaitan takes from Izzat Allah, Izzat al Rasul wa Izzat al Mu'mineen. So it means that the presence of Prophet ﷺ is in everything. It's called Muhammadun Rasulullah ﷺ. Every animate, inanimate object is made from Muhammadun Rasulullah ﷺ. So it's a horizontal movement that your physicality is vibrating low so you see nothing but yourself. As soon as they teach you connect your heart, that have good character, do all these good deeds and then they teach you how to connect your hearts with the shaykh. Why? Because the shaykh are like the cable company. Their vibration is very strong. As soon as you make your tafakkur and contemplation, call upon their presence, from your presence they begin to move towards you. The fires and the energy of the shaykh begins to change your energy and vibration and begin to pull you into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad that's why Allah ittaqullah wa kunu ma sadiqeen. Have a taqwa. This was all that we talked about because these are the characters of taqwa, consciousness, good character, good deeds, good akhlaq. And keep the, the company, kunu ma sadiqeen. Keep the company of these pious servants whom are pious in their deeds and their actions. And Allah doesn't care for dunya. So when He's saying, kunu ma sadiqeen, means at all time, day, night, physical, spiritual more important because Allah's words are for eternity not for 50 years of earth, 60 years of earth 
wa kunuma sadaqeen why because if you make that connection on this earth you die tomorrow you live for all of eternity with that connection it's a connection that never lost if i got your phone number and you say i'm leaving to hawaii next week i still have your phone number there's a phone number that if you get it's for all of eternity this is your madad you make your spiritual connection with these awliya because you're now connecting to their eternal soul. You die tomorrow that connection is for all of eternity, will take with you into the grave that connection. Most powerful call you'll make in your life is in your grave because you didn't understand it in this world if you didn't meditate. In your grave you'll understand that, I don't know if I was heedless or not but I'm making a call. Like when you go to jail why they have that? You're allowed one phone call, make it a good one. You don't have an attorney? No, I'm going to call my uncle, well that's not going to help you get out of this problem, right? What's your get out of jail? The azab is the qabr, are these all shaqeen? If you're trained in your madad and trained on how to connect your heart, you enter into the qabr in whatever condition you make your one phone call, it's through your heart that, Ya Rabbi I'm asking for the madad of the people whom I trusted in my life and that you ordered me to keep their presence. What happens? Immediately their souls are present with you like attorneys in your grave. Hold on. And what Allah said? How can I punish them when they're asking for forgiveness and that you are amongst them? Because now this is a Muhammadan individual coming into your grave. Muhammadan light, the shaykhs carry a Muhammadan light because so many salawats, so many dressings, what happens? If you make 10,000 salawats a day, Prophet is 10,000 times with you making 10 prayers on top of you from the world of light which we can't begin to understand its beginning and its ending means they are with whom they love, they keep the companionship of Prophet Now imagine in the grave you called upon that individual, that shaykh. Immediately that Muhammadan light appears within the grave in the presence of the light of Sayyidina Muhammad is coming into the grave. Every azab has to stop because these are the rules. Allah will not punish a servant when the presence and the light of Sayyidina Muhammad is there. Every difficulty will be resolved, every badness will be cleaned. And this is not a hard deed because yet we don't understand the greatness of Sayyidina Muhammad's light. So means this is one call you take for all of eternity with your life. All the time and effort that people spend to make contacts and connections in this filthy earth, if they spent just one tenth of that time to make their connection and get the, the correct contact for their shaykh and to connect their heart, they take that information for all of eternity, for all of eternity and that becomes their key. Now and last days <clears throat> with, with every fright and fear and every sickness they're going to threaten and every difficulty they're going to impose, the key of our protection is Muhammadun Rasulullah with good character, good manners and keep that phone and keep that number in your pocket. Means that you learn how to make your madad, you learn how to make your connection. And that's why we said before that if you say, oh no I follow a shaykh but like for 40 years ago, I followed a shaykh for 30 years ago, I think that number is disconnected now unless you made an eternal connection. You established your relationship before the shaykh passed. If you didn't establish your satellite connection that is free from ground interference, you know when the shaykh gives you an ijazah that we're with you, 
and now you represent us, you sign for. Means your phone is now, doesn't need landlines. You are with our connection for all of eternity. So people can't just use old systems and that's why we said that they have to email. They have to make sure that the shaykh they're dealing with, are they really communicating? Are they connecting? Are they learning? Are they understanding? And they develop the, a bond within their heart and as a result with that bond and in their practices they feel, they meditate, they're practicing. Why? Because as soon as they begin to turn up the heat again that connection goes into overdrive. Everything in Allah's equations are balanced. When the azab is turned up the blessings is turned up even stronger. This earth is a balanced equation. So if dajjal increases negativity by permission of Allah Allah increase positivity but only a few. Only a few will carry the positivity for many because you don't see the many coming into this. So now it become like the stars on a dark night. Dark night actually becomes dunya. And what Prophet described of his companions, my companions are like stars on a dark night. The earth and zulamat, when we say zalim that shaitan brings and dajjal brings is darkness. We call nighttime zalim, zulam. Means what? The earth becomes blackened, dark, you can't see nothing. But Prophet described now that my companions will be stars on this dark night. Who are the companions in the last days? The ashiqeen, they love me and I love them. And He gave them a name that they are my lovers, they love me and I love them. And they keep the companionship based on the hadith, you b- b- based on the hadith of Prophet that you be with whom you love. Whom you love will be with you. So the oppression of the earth becomes black but they become shining stars because of the light of Prophet So although we enter into very difficult times, well glad tidings for those whom have this love because Allah inshaAllah going to turn up the energy in which the light and emanations from their heart illuminate the immense darknesses that the dajjal and dajjal system wishes to put upon the earth. Because they plan, Allah's plan is much better. We pray that Allah grant us an understanding to keep this love, to nourish the love and to build that call, build that connection of madad so that it's strong and that we feel and take the benefit of it. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.